What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today I'm going to talk to you about five pens that I have actually fallen out of love with. Oh, they're still great pens and I'm sure some of you actually prefer them. Um, some of you will probably have them as your favorite, um, but they're pens that I've purchased uh, with my own money. They were not sent to me, purchased with my own money um, that I loved at one point or another, but just, you know, I need to break up a little bit. Not that they're still not great pens, it's just, uh, they've lost that wow for me. They've lost that ability to make me excited to use it. So I'm gonna stop talking, flip the camera around, and we're gonna dive into it. So one of the pens that I have fallen out of love with is this guy here. Um, the finish, I think, is beautiful. <laughs> this dark lilac, I think, is, is beautiful. But this is the Lamy Safari. I just, I never use it anymore. <laughs> um, you know, it. I don't have a cartridge uh, converter in here, but it takes a cartridge converter, it is proprietary. Um, I think the reason why I've fallen out of love with this guy is just because while the triangle grip doesn't bother me really, um, because I've used so many other pens, it doesn't it doesn't fit as well as others. I think it's still fine, and I think this pen is great for a lot of people. I still recommend it as, as a pen that uh, you know you should try, you should own, especially if you're just getting into this pen. But for me personally, I've just, I don't know. Eh, you know, that's, that's my view of this pen now for me. Um, and it doesn't write exceptionally wet. And that's probably the biggest reason why I have fallen out of love with the majority of these pens actually is because they all write on the drier side, which I know can be fixed, um, but I just don't wanna put the effort into these to do that. So this is definitely uh, one of the ones I have fallen out of love with. Uh, another one uh, that's probably gonna break a lot of people's hearts uh, is pretty much the entire brand of Twisby. So I've sold off almost all of the Twisby pens I've had, uh, which if you go through my catalog of videos that I've done, um, I've reviewed almost all Twisby's uh, pens. These are the only two that I still have left. Um, and I've pretty much fallen out of love with all Twisby. They make really great pens. They're all well built. Um, they're all piston fill with the exception of this which is like push button um they're all piston fill and you know they're they're really great for a lot of people and again I would still recommend it to people um but for me it's just not the writing experience that I want they're all really tough nibs like they're really hard um they don't offer a lot and you know they're they're really really on the drier side with the exception of this eco this eco is the only one I've had that is on the wetter side. What I do love about it is that it's really easy to clean. You can pretty much disassemble the entire pen no problem um, and clean it out, which is, is really great for um, you know using inks with difficult properties. But I just, eh, you know? Even this broad nib is pretty dry for being a broad. Like I just, I don't get excited uh, you know, when I think about Twisby anymore. So. Those are those guys here. Um, another one is this guy here. This is the Monteverde Essenza. Um, this one actually writes pretty darn well. Uh, it, it's a Bach nib. Um, it's not Monteverde's nib. Um, it, it's actually a little on the wetter side. Um, it is a cartridge converter. Um, and I think the only reason why I've, I've fallen out of love with this one is it's just too heavy. Uh, it's almost entirely like metal trims. So grip section um, and here, here and here. And I just, it's a little on the heavy side. And usually when I write, I write for a long time. So that just doesn't, doesn't grab me anymore. It's a little, little too heavy. So I'm not really excited by that one very much anymore either. Um, one that I don't have currently with me anymore, but I will put a picture over the top with is the Edison Collier or Collier, however you want to pronounce that. Um, 
I still think that's a great pen in the sense that like, well, all of these really, I, I keep saying this, but all of these pens really are, are great pens for a lot of people. Um, they're just not right for me anymore. As I've continued to go through this hobby, um, I've realized what pens are perfect for me and what aren't, uh, which means that these pens could be perfect for somebody else and the ones that I deem perfect they hate. <laughs> um, and that is one with the Edison Collier. And I think that's just because the body is so big um, that it's just, it's not super comfortable anymore to me. Um, and it actually writes really well. Um, Edison does take a look at their nibs before they send them out. So the, the nib itself is really great and it, it writes pretty wet as well. Um, but it just, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't pull me anymore. And I still do have an Edison pen. Um, I still have the um, Goulet exclusive like Nouveau Premier. Um, I love this color. This I, I don't keep inked up all the time. This is like really like a fall winter pen for me. But um, I do still have this one. Fun fact, I have a Bach titanium nib in it, um, which let me know if you want to see a review of that. Um, so I do still have an Edison pen. I, I love their pens. I think they're really well made. Um, but the color just meh doesn't do it for me anymore. Um, and then the last one, I think will also come as a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, this finish is sublime, <laughs> but it's the Pilot Vanishing Point. I have definitely fallen out of love with this pen. I used to have two more, um, which I have again since sold. Um, this one I've kept only because I just love the finish of it. This is the Twilight Finish, one of their special editions that people went bananas for. Um, but I just don't use it. In fact, I can't even really remember the last time that I did use it. I couldn't even begin to tell you. Um, over a year for sure. Um, I just, I don't know. The... The Vanishing Point just doesn't fit well with me anymore. It doesn't bother me as far as like, you know, the, the feel, uh, the clip being here, like all the things that typically annoy people doesn't annoy me. <laughs> it's just when I write with it, I don't know, it's not wet enough for me. The medium nib is just, it's kind of basic. There, you know what, that's that's basically, that sums up this, this pen for me now. It's, it's, it's basic and that's totally fine. I'm just looking for something in a fountain pen now that, that grabs me, that wows me. Um, and the only thing about this pen now that wows me is the finish. And well, that wears off pretty quickly. I just, I haven't been able to let it go yet for some strange reason. Um, like I said, repeatedly now, these pens are still great. They're going to be great for a lot of people. They're just not great for me anymore. Um, so those are pens that I have fallen out of love with. Um, what, what pens have you guys fallen out of love with? What pen did you get um, that you were really, really excited to get? Uh, you've loved it, loved it, loved it, used it, used it, used it. And then you just sort of stopped using it. It's like, you know, your, your cozy comfort blanket when you were a kid. It used to be, you know, the thing that you obsessed over. And then over time, you just kind of drifted apart. <laughs> you know, and now it's, it's time to break up with them. Doesn't mean you didn't cherish the time you had. It's just time to move on. <laughs> All right, guys, that's about it for me today. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more every Monday and Friday and the occasional Q&A thrown up in between. Uh, guys, as always, I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye.